Psalms 105, verses 1 through 2 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon His name, make known His deeds among the people. Sing unto Him, sing psalms unto Him, talk ye of all His wondrous works. You know, tomorrow we're going to be celebrating Thanksgiving here in the United States of America. And today I want to talk about thankfulness. We need to be thankful in every situation. No matter what situation we find ourselves in, we need to be thankful. And how do you become thankful? By thanking Him for everything and making sure that everybody knows of His great works, the amazing works that He has done in your life. Start out your day by being thankful. And if you start out your day by being thankful, God's going to move in your life. Let's start this podcast outright. Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you are in our lives. We thank you for our, our relationship. We thank you for uh, the ministry. We thank you for the love and the mercy that you have for our lives, God. And God, I pray even over this podcast today, Lord, I don't want to speak anything that is of me. I don't want to speak anything that is of my opinions or my ways, God. But I want to speak your heart and I want to speak to your people what you would have for them today, Lord. God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Therefore, and teach all the nations by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching all that I have commanded you. And join me. Now is the time to jump in. Now is the time to jump in with everything that is within you. Hello and welcome to the Adventures of the Great Commission presented to you by Revival for Christ Club International Ministries. My name is Ryan Colley. I'm the International Evangelist of Revival for Christ Club International. And I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in today. This is episode 25 and today we're going to be talking about thankfulness. Also going to be talking about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is coming up Tomorrow, that's right, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and uh, so today for the podcast, I wanted to talk about what we're thankful for and uh, what it means to be thankful, and uh, instead of just doing a solo podcast, I have decided to bring in the one, the only, my brother-in-law, MIT, Frank Willis. Welcome to the podcast, well, Frank. Well, thanks, Ryan. It's finally, I'm finally thankful to be on this side of the table. <laughs> oh, he's Absolutely. finally thankful, not No, finally. you know, because I finally get an opportunity to sit on this side of the table. Be you your, do. Be well, your guest. You, you were, last time, you were, I was in the guest chair, yes. and you were hosting, so this is your second this podcast. This is my second podcast, and um, it's, it's really honor so thank you for inviting me to this excellent so I'm, I'm so happy that you uh, came with us today um, you know I, wa I wanted to talk about uh, you know thankfulness I, I think something uh, that is so needed in the body of Christ is we need to learn to be thankful in every situation I think um, we, we get so caught up in the problems and the issues that we have in life and uh, we we forget to be thankful. Yeah, and it's so easy. It's it's really easy to get caught up in those things. It's really easy to be negative. It's real easy to see a, a, a situation that's happening and you don't see a positive aspect of it. I mean, just the other day I had a flat tire and that's yeah. all I could think about was the fact that there was a flat tire, yeah. you know, and it's- And, and it's, the money that you have to and spend, the, money, yeah, and that's the time that you're gonna have to spend. That's exactly it, and so it's, it, it was real easy for me to to slip out of that positivity and think, you know, well, my car's still running. It's not going to cost as much as I think, you know. Or, yeah. But I'm, but, I'm, but you you it, it's really hard for us in those times to to really see a silver lining. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, you know, so many times when we're caught up in the the issues that we've got going forward. Uh, we, all we can see is the negative, negative, negative. And that's exactly what the enemy, that's exactly what the devil wants us to do, is he wants to focus on the negativity or the things that maybe might not be perfect in our life. And it's important for us to always be thankful, to be thankful in all things. Yes. You know, uh, even in the problems. Yes. Uh, and, and the reason why I say that it's in, important for us to be thankful even in our problems is because if we didn't have problems, if we didn't have mistakes, if we didn't have trials or tribulations, we wouldn't know that God could bring us through. And it's in those times, it's in those things that God increases our faith. You know, there have been many issues, even in my own life, that I, you know, I, I look back now and I, I, I found out that it was in those situations that my faith increased. And so now I look back 
and it kind of sounds crazy to most people, it's easy for people to, to be thankful whenever something good happens. It's easy, it's easy to be thankful for your, your, your parents, or your, your brothers and your sisters, your husband, your wife, um, your pets, your, the, 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 the things that we know that we're supposed to be thankful for. But I think it's important for us to understand, it's important for us to be thankful um, in every situation, no matter what it is, you know, um, especially with us living in America. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the country that we live in, we are blessed with so, so, so we need to be thankful for the small things uh, as, mu as much as the big things. Oh, yeah. There was a, uh, that reminds me, there was a time I was actually deployed. Okay. And, and um, you know, when, when people in the Air Force deploy, they're more than likely going to a place where there's a bed, possibly a TV, a fridge in their room, you know, something like that, a bathroom, you know, that, yeah. that kind of stuff. And, and that's where I was. I was in a place where I had all these nice amenities and it was, you know, it was great. We had a library, we had a movie theater, we had all this stuff. But eventually there are those times when you get really bored with what you have and you're there for a long, long time. Yeah. So I was, I was, there, with a, I was there with a buddy and, uh, and both he and I were talking about how bored we were. And we we're just like, oh, man, this is terrible. We're out in the middle of the desert. And this is, oh, the <laughs> heat is just unbearable. And, you know, just massively complain about every little thing that we can complain about. Yeah. And these two Marines come and sit down at the table in, in front of us. And uh, one, of, one of the guy turns to, the, to, his, to his buddy and he says, man, I'm so glad we we're finally live, sleeping in a bed. Hmm. And, it, and instantly it was like, ooh, I need to keep my mouth shut. Yeah. Because <laughs> while these guys are digging holes to lay down in, you know, to, to, and, and dirt as their pillows, here I am in a nice comfy bed. I had a, I had a shower. I had a, uh, a fridge. I had everything that I could ask for and then some, and, and yet I was complaining. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it was, it, you know, it... You, we have to be able to look at the situation that we're in and see the value of where we're at at that point, no matter what the issue is. Was I deployed? Yes. Was I in a war zone? Yes. Was I, could I have been getting shot at? Yes. But think of all the things that I had that were a positive thing that, yeah. that, that helped me get through that. You, yeah. know, you know what I mean? I agree. Yeah. So. Well, no matter the situation that uh, we find ourselves in, one thing that you got to remember is, you know, no matter how tough you have it, no matter what situation that you're in, there's usually always going to be somebody that might be in a situation that's a lot tougher than yourself. It's a lot worse than you. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I have been blessed and, and, and I'm very appreciative. I've, I've been to nine different countries in my life and mm -hmm. I've been able to preach the Word of God in, in like five or six of those. And, you know, th those are countries, some of the countries that I went to, it, it, was, it was a question whether there was going to be indoor plumbing where I was going. It was going to be a question whether there was going to be a, a, a bed for me to sleep on. There was, there was a question whether there was going to be, you know, heat and air. You know, we, the, 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 the small things that we come to uh, you know, we, we come to expect here in the United States sure. of America, and you know, and so, um, no matter what situation that you're in, no matter what problems come in, and, I, and I'm talking about physical things, but I, but we also need to be thankful, you know, uh, no matter what. Maybe you're you're someone that has a situation that maybe you don't have a a great father, but maybe God's blessed you with a great mother then you need to be thankful for that mother. Maybe you're someone that maybe you didn't have a great mom, but you've got a great dad. You need to be thankful for your dad. You know, but see, what the world teaches us is to focus on what you don't have and focus on what, uh, what, what's not positive in your life. And what God teaches us is He teaches us to be positive in every situation, to be thankful in every situation. And actually, the opening scripture that I used for this was uh, Psalms chapter 105. Oh. Um, it's, uh, it says, Oh, give, verse 1 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon His name, and make known His deeds among the people. You know, it's important for us to make known of His deeds in our life. So I want to encourage you, if you're listening to this podcast today, spend every single day of your life making known the deeds that God has done, the, the great things. Talk about the things that you're thankful for. Not, don't, you know, it's, it's easy to talk about the things that you're not thankful for or the, or your, or the things that are negative in your life. But sometimes it can be tough because, you know, the way that the world teaches and the way that our fleshly creation teaches us is just to look at all, well, I don't have this, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I won't, I, you know, this is terrible, this is bad. 
And what God wants us to do is think about the positive things and the things that are, are uh, the deeds that He's done in our lives. And so, you know, if you're a Christian, you should be thankful that He saved your soul, that He sent His Son to die on the cross for our life. That's the number one deed. We yes. should be thankful for that yes. every single day. Absolutely, absolutely. And that, you know, that, that, that brings up a good point. Look at what... Look at what Jesus went through in order to to save us. Yeah. You know, um, would you do that? Come would on. you die on the cross? You know, uh, one of the things one of the things we're the we're constantly saying, you know, in, in this in this podcast right now is is having a positive attitude, a positive mentality, not not having a negative mentality. And one of the scriptures that I was going to bring in yeah. was uh, Psalm 104, okay. where it says, Enter into the gates with thanksgiving, and do it into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. One of the things that uh, that I really take adv- take hold of is one of the teachings that Chief Apostle Timothy Vanover has taught us, is that the gate is our mind. Yes. So... If, if we if we and look why is at, that? Let's let's talk about that. Even yeah. if you maybe have not heard this, why is the gate of the mind? Frank? Because it, because it's the first thing that happens when when you either do something positive or you do something negative. Yeah. So even if, if your thought if your thought is a negative thought, your go, your actions are going to reflect what that thought is. Mm-hmm. So that's the gate. It's the doorway essentially into what action you're you're about to be led into. And, and the gate is what? And the gate is our mind. Yeah. Yeah. And so. You know, there's a reason that God said, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus, because if we have a positive thought here, our action is going to be positive. Yeah. If we have a thankful thought here, our actions are going to be thankful. If yeah. we, and same thing, uh, same holds true with the, with the negative. If we have a negative thought, we're going to go into sin. Yeah. If we have a complaining thought, we're going to go into sin. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm All saying? Right, so if you look in Philippians... Yeah. Uh, two, two and fourteen. Mm-hmm. It's it's down further from where from where uh, he says, "Let this mind be you, in you, which is also in Christ Jesus." But if you read in the Amplified, it says, "Do all things without grumbling and fault finding and complaining against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves." How many times have we? blamed God for the situation we're in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? No matter what, no matter what it is, however bad the situation is or whatever, you you instantly forget that that he might have put you there to to mm-hmm. teach you. He might have put you there to to increase his relationship with yep. you. He might have put you there to increase your faith in him. And you're why God? Why God has thou forsaken me? You mm-hmm. know, and yeah. and 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 we we think that that he's done this and he's and he's being mean to us or or whatever but we don't realize that there's a higher purpose to this yeah. it's because no matter what happened G, like like we said earlier Jesus went to the cross for God and to save us it yeah. wasn't it wasn't because he he was the son of God it was because God told him that's what you're going to do okay i'm going to do it regardless of what the what the situation was but the reason that he does this is because in verse 15 it says that you may show yourselves to be blameless and guileless innocent and uncontaminated children of God without blemish faultless unrebukable in the midst of a crooked and wicked generation spiritually perverted and perverse among whom you are seen as bright lights stars or beacons shining out clearly in the dark world He's saying that the reason we have to put that mind of Christ on is because when we do, we don't complain about the situation we're in. Yeah. No matter what happens to us, mm-hmm. our mm-hmm. actions will reflect Jesus. Our actions will show everybody else out in the world that this is the way that we're supposed to handle all these situations. We're supposed to be the example. Yeah. Well, and, and I think you, uh, you hit something there when you said we try to blame God for the situation that we're in. And when you blame someone for something, that's already a negative connotation. That's exactly right. And see, the thing is, is we need to thank God for any situation that we're in. Because we don't know, the thing is, is that we think we, so many times we think we know better than God. Right. We think that everything has to be perfect, or everything has to work out exactly the way that our mind tells it's supposed to work out. And that's not the case. I don't know how many times in my life where something happened and I didn't understand why I was going through what I was going through. But at the end of it, I was thankful that I went through it. There are many times that the struggles and and tribulations and trials that I've been through that I was like, why am I going through this? Mm -hmm. 
But in the end, I was thankful. I was so thankful. I mean, for, I'll give you an instance. It's something that I can now look back on, and I'm very thankful for it. But we had a situation in our, uh, our theater in our church uh, uh, a couple years back. You've heard me talk about it uh, on the podcast before. We have something that's very near and dear to our heart here uh, at Revival for Christ in the Yellow Rose Theater. It's called the Sharon L. Vanover Memorial Dinner event. And we raise funds all year round. We are a blue-collar charity. We raise funds all year round. We have multiple fundraisers all months throughout the year because this is a project that cost over $60,000 to be able to put on. Um, and we help over 2,000 children and families at Christmas time. And so we raise funds to do this. And we were in the middle of it. This was in December. I think it was two years ago. December, we were right in the middle of it. We'd already done two shows. We had two more shows to do. We just had about 170 kids coming from Lawton that we were about to help. I was just about to go shopping. And then guess what happened? The heater in the theater went down. And it wasn't fixable. It had to be replaced. And guess how much it cost to replace that? A lot of money. Was, not only not only a lot of money. A lot of money. But the yeah. exact amount of money that we had in the account to shop for the kids. And so we had to make a decision. And 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 it, and it was cold that that winter. I remember it was you know the temperatures were in the twenties, tens, teens, and twenties. And so it's not like oh well we can get by. We had to fix it. And so we got together, uh, Timothy, Chief Apostle Timothy Vanover, Pastor Chris, and me, and Apostle Jenny. We were, I remember we were at Ted's Escondido, and we were eating lunch, and we were praying, what do we do? And so we prayed, and all four of us prayed, and we all heard the same answer. Now, I will be honest with you. I am the finance guy of the church and the theater. So when it comes to spending money, a lot of times it's a lot harder for me. When I hear spending money, I'm like, don't do it, don't do it. Uh. But I heard, clearly heard the same thing that all four yeah. of us heard, and that was to use that money to put in the new heater. And then, so then instantly, I was like, "Oh my goodness, what are we going to do?" do? Yeah. I still have, I still have that amount of money of shopping that I've got to do, and it wasn't like, "Well, we'll get by." No, I still had lack. Right. But I'll tell you this: in four days, the Lord replaced that money. And then some. God replaced it. So my faith grew so much in that situation. Was it, was it a situation that I could have instantly gone, Oh my goodness, God, why did you do this to us? You know what we got to do. But instead, I had to step back. And I, said, I had to say, God. <laughs> I look back on it now. Lord, thank you for putting me in this situation. Yes. See, we, if, see, if we go into every situation, no matter good or bad, if we go into every situation, thankful. Thankful for Him. Because you know what? At the end of the day, no matter what your struggle may is, you may, you may have a bill that's almost 30 days past due. You may have, uh, uh, your car may have broken down. You may, every situation, God wants to teach us to be thankful and thankful. Every situation. Because you know what? God brings us through. And it may not be exactly how we want. It may not exactly how we true. think. Yep. But God brings us through. Definitely. You know what? And at the end of the day, all the struggles that we have, He gave us the greatest gift. That happened a long time ago. You know what? Cars are going to fade. Buildings are going to go. Money's going to come and go. But at, the, but at the end of the day, our salvation and our relationship with Him, that's what matters most. And see, if we can remember to be thankful for that, nothing yeah. else matters. Nothing else really matters. Right. And so I think it's important that we start at the beginning. And like you said, it's, we got to be thankful in the gate. In the gate. In our mind. we got to start every single day. To be thankful. It start, It definitely starts there. And I, I can't tell you how many times or experiences even I've had where if I'd have just looked back and saw the positive things out of there, I think my reaction to those situations would have been a whole lot different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, so it definitely starts right here. Stop worrying about what the situation is. Just worry about, like, try and find the silver lining in there. Yeah. You know what I mean, and that and, and that takes ex, that takes experience, and it takes it takes uh, uh, you know basically building a habit of doing that. Yeah. Because our natural reaction is just to go stress and worry. Oh, 
yeah, I'm yeah. done. I can't. I can't do this anymore. I don't yeah. know what. I don't know what to do. You know. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. I mean, I, I, ah. And I love this because you know what? I mean, I'm, I'm preaching to myself just as much as. Oh I'm yeah, me too. Talking in those, on me this too. podcast. There's me a lot too. of things even in my current life right now. Yeah. That the Lord is teaching me. You know, and it's crazy because you know what's nuts about it is that He's done it over and over again. He 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 He, he, he continues. He's always been there. Yeah. And yet we still forget. But if we begin at the gate every single day, if we are thankful for the most simple thing, everything else is easy. It really is. Uh, the hardest part about the things like that, though, is developing, uh, is developing that habit of being able to do so. And that, you know, the next time I get to preach or teach in Sunday school, that's yeah. what I'm going to talk about because we've been talking about prayer a lot, you yeah. know, and how and how much our prayer life, you know, needs to be increased and this, that, and the other. But it all boils down to you doing it. Yeah. And you doing that, you have to develop the habit of doing that, yeah. regardless of what type of prayer or whatever it is you're using. It's the same thing here with with the with you you know going to your thoughts you have to develop that habit so at first you have to sub you have to consciously go okay i'm in a situation you've got to stop you've got to evaluate that situation you've got to and then you've got to say where is the positive aspect of this situation you can't just you can't just allow your feelings and emotions to well up inside of you and take over yeah i agree you know it, it's important for us to be habitually thankful yes that, that, that so that I, I think that's great frank uh, that, that's something that anybody that's listening or watching the podcast today remember that try to remember that even when we go into thanksgiving this weekend i know it's a or this coming thursday um i know it's uh a time that family comes together and, 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 and what the history is behind it. But if you are a Christian, if you're someone that, is, that says that I am trying to be like Christ, I want to be Christ-like, then I, I encourage you, I implore you to spend time creating habits of thankfulness every day. You know, even if, you know, I actually, uh, there, there's a lady that's in my, I'm in a networking group that helps we network our theater in, and uh, she had talked about that. She does this every single day. She gets on her notes on her phone, and she writes down three things that she's thankful every single day. So do that. I encourage you, write down three things every day, or, or when you're up in the shower, or when you're up in the morning doing your daily routine, Think about those things. Because when you think about those things that you're thankful for, it makes it easier to be positive. It yeah. makes it easier, you know, you think about the people that God has placed in your life. Think about the church that God has placed you in. Think about your relationship with Him. You know, and those things are a lot, they're uplifting. Because what the devil wants to do is want you to think about the bills that aren't paid and right. the car that's not running yes. and, the, and, and, and uh, you know, all the negativity that, that there might be in your life. And so if we spend our days or we spend our, our days thinking and, and, and going at the gate with that thankfulness, it's important. So, flash test. Okay. Frank, ready. Three things you're thankful for. Right now, I'm thankful for my wife, for sure. I'm thankful for the job that I have, and I'm thankful for my friends and family. That's awesome. I mean, that's the, you know, I, I know that that's a simple, yeah. a simple three, yeah. but, no, you no. know, uh, you know the situation I'm in, mm-hmm. you know, I don't, I don't have to be here. I could be off doing something else, but I love doing what I'm doing. Yeah. And so I'm very... And for those of you that don't know, Frank is retired Air Force. Yes. Uh, how many years were you in the Air Force? I was in uh, 22 years, three months, and 10 days. Not that I was counting. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, and he works, uh, he works at the church and theater now for us. And he's also uh, in, in training to be a minister at Revival for Christ. And so uh, um, I know... Uh, as a uh, member of the staff here at Revival for Christ, yes. we, I am very thankful for you, not only for you being um, my brother-in-law and uh, you're wonderful to my sister, but um, for all the things that you do for God, you know. Um, so yeah, no, no. So why are you thankful for your wife? Man, she's my, uh, you know, you hear this all the time, but I, I you know, I, and I know when people say they, they, you can tell when they mean it and yeah. she is truly my, my better half. She has taught me how to uh, quell my emotions a mm-hmm. little bit better. Mm-hmm. You know, I've taught her how to be more structured. She's, you, you know, and yeah. so, so there's a, it's a very good balance of a relationship, so to speak, you yeah. know, and so what her strengths are, 
are my weaknesses and yeah. what my weak what my strengths are are her weaknesses and, yeah. and it blends very well so i'm really thankful for that. brings a good balance it does bring a good that, balance that's awesome okay so my three thankful things i am first and foremost thankful for um, my relationship with god that's the most important thing in my life and you know uh, I've talked to you guys a little bit. We started the podcast this year, but this has been a tough year for me personally, um, and then also been a tough year for our church. Right. Um, but I am so thankful that His grace is sufficient. I'm so thankful that His mercy endureth forever. I'm so thankful that He loves me uh, despite of myself, and I'm so thankful that um, he, he just loves me and, and cares for me, and His favor is on me. I'm, I'm thankful for the, That's one thing I'm very thankful for is God has given me a lot of favor in yes. my life. And yes. um, I'm so thankful for that. Um, I'm thankful for my family, um, uh, blood and church family. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometimes uh, our, our church family or, or other people that we consider and that, family yeah, in and our that's, life. That's the thing, too. Yeah, I mean, like, our church family is literally that. It's a family. Yeah. And, you know, I am very thankful for that because, you know, you with with my like my personal background, I'm an only child in a two-family household where I have a stepbrother, two stepsisters. I don't have, you know, so... Yeah. I, so I don't, and then on top of that, it was just me and my stepbrother growing up. So I don't have a, a whole like perspective on other people's, you know, yeah. ways of doing things, or even their, how their relationship with God works, or that kind of stuff. And I'm very thankful because I can consider these guys family because it's all they're all doing the same thing. They're all going for the same, you know, the same prize, so Definitely. to speak. Yeah. And and it's nice to see it's nice to see different perspectives. And have that that family atmosphere. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, definitely. Like, like the crazy aunt, or the <laughs> or, or the 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 lazy brother, or whatever. You know, yeah. it just it. I love I love seeing all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, too. Uh, one another thing that I'm thankful for is that God allows me to be me. You know, yes. and, and I, you know, there's so many people that are in ministry that feel like they have to be something else they have to be uh, or they have to be to a certain standard sure and I'm thankful that revival for Christ is not someone that makes you be anything else than what who God called you to be sure and so I'm, I'm thankful for that you know um, me I, I like to joke and have a little fun mm-hmm. you know and, and, mm-hmm. and I believe in I believe when the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength and so I, I, lo- I love that the that our, our ministry creates opportunities for me to act like Chris Farley in our dinner theater yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and to let that creative side you know I can't draw worth anything and I can't sing worth a lick but I, I you know I, I can imitate people and uh, you know and you do a great job at it and it's one of the funner parts of the the season yeah, so that we know that that's that's where you're going to shine the brightest. And I'm thankful because so. Mr. Frank is going to be in our new Christmas show. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Too. So, and I tell you, anybody that's listening to the podcast, if you've not been to the Yellow Rose Dinner Theater, you need to come. Uh, we have our Christmas show starting December second, and it's going to be every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And uh, we got Fruitcake Frank going to be there. Woohoo! A new, with, new elfin character. A new elfin character, and then you got Gingerbread Jeff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, Candy Cane Paul. That's or right. Peppermint. Peppermint Paul. Peppermint Paul. I don't know. Some of it's changed. But, uh, but yeah, we're nearing the end of the podcast today. So we're going to do some a little bit of fun. Um, so Thanksgiving is coming around the corner. That it is. And Frank, uh, he likes to, he's got something that's very special and near and dear to his heart. We call it the food fetus. I do. I have the food fetus. <laughs> so we call it we call it Phyllis. F I L L U S. Phyllis. <laughs> Phyllis with your yumminess. That's right. <laughs> so so Franklin, uh, tell me uh, what are some of your favorite holiday or Thanksgiving foods that you are thankful for and looking forward to? Well, by <laughs> far, it's going to be pecan pie. Woo! Yes. Does Tasha make that? Yes. Oh, you, you don't know. Uh, you know the story about the pecan pie, the $600 pecan pie. Oh, yes. We were doing a, the, uh, the auction. A fund, a fundraising auction, and I had to pay I had to pay $600 for a pecan pie. It was good. I don't think it was worth $600 good, but it was good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but I do, I do. But he helped me go to the Philippines that, that year. <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> that's true. And then, um, I think my my other favorite part of the meal for Thanksgiving is the uh, stovetop stuffing. I know it sounds cheesy, and I know it's like 
takes as long as it takes to boil water, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's still one of my one of my favorite things to do. Is, you like the stovetop? I love stuffing. the stovetop. Yep. I I love deviled eggs because you don't get deviled eggs very often any other time. So I love the deviled eggs, and um, you know what I'm going to try this year because I don't cook. So I want everybody to raise your hand to the screen or the if you're listening to in your car <laughs> i'm gonna try to cook something this year and bring to my families yes. is a pumpkin roll oh, okay i'm gonna try it. so i'm not I'm, I'm gonna tell you um i i know of a place that i can pick one up that i've, I've been told is really good so i'm gonna do that in case <laughs> but then i'm gonna i'm gonna get the ingredients and i'm gonna do i'm gonna yes. do <laughs> I love a, a good pumpkin you're, roll. You're going to take a little, oh, this is terrible. Okay, I guess we're going. Get the or <laughs> what, if, what if I get it and like, oh my goodness, maybe I'm good. Go with plan B. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to let I'm gonna let my grandfather lives with me, mm. uh, my list, last living grandparent. So I'm going to let him uh, cook a thing or two. And I'm actually probably let him do the deviled eggs. And then I'm going to. Uh, brave out and try to the the pumpkin roll and Brittany behind the camera is shaking her head and and saying no but you got to give it a shot okay I mean come on uh, there's, you know, there's no judgment in our house <laughs> no judgment yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well if it's not any good because I'm gonna test it if it's not any good then I'll bring the one that was made by the store that's right um, but you know what's funny is what I actually look forward to is the day after Thanksgiving. Yes. I love I cold turkey sandwiches with mayonnaise and sour cream and cheddar chips. Well, this is why I love stovetop. Okay. So you, you take the, you know, afterward, you take a, a plate and you, you line it with a, with stovetop on the plate and then mm -hmm. you throw all your turkey on there. Yeah. And then you, and then you throw a little bit of gravy on it and you wrap it in plastic, throw it in the microwave for like two minutes, come out and you just mix it all up and it's just, that, that's and what you I, do that at the I, day after Thanksgiving? I do that every time. Oh, at, wow. least, at least two or three plates as long as there's enough leftovers. Yes. Oh, wow. Uh, so, see, I do the turkey sandwich. I always right. do the cold turkey sandwich with real mayonnaise with the sour cream and onion chips. I mean, this cheddar sour cream and onion oh, chips. Oh, there you go. There you go. It's good stuff. Well, you know, we're doing this podcast. I promise you it's not a food podcast. It's a, <laughs> it, it it's is, a, we're talking about God at first. So it, you know. it, it is a ministry <laughs> podcast, but everybody knows sometimes we're full gospel. That's right. Complete full gospel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, well, Frank, I tell you what, um, I'm, I'm very thankful that you're in my life, and I really mean that with all my heart. You're uh, my good brother in law and um, you know you're I'm, I'm so excited to see where God is taking you in ministry and um, I'm, I'm just thankful for you thankful for you in my life and um, what he doesn't tell you is that he's thankful that I bring him food just about every morning not anymore he's on a diet I don't know why he goes on a diet right before Thanksgiving <laughs> <laughs> Every time you see me in these podcasts with a little drink like this, that means yeah. I'm doing good. That's because that's because he's decided to go on a diet two days. Well, before I gained a lot of weight. Eat. I needed to lose some, okay? <laughs> um, but no. I, I, thanks for coming on today. Thank you. I love thank you, brother, you. very been, much. It's been awesome. Um, I do want to say one thing yeah, before sure. before we go. Go ahead. Um, you know, Thanksgiving and uh, of course Christmas. You know, the holiday season. It's it's a time when uh, when certain people are away from families and you know uh, like we were talking earlier about how it's so easy for us to to take it or, or uh, take you know not consider the the other things out there but um, being military there were many times I wasn't able to come home for Thanksgiving and I wasn't able to come home for Christmas so I just want to put a shout out to all the service members that are out yeah. there Amen. thank you guys so much for your sacrifice and what you do there have been many times that I know I've been out on a deployment during Thanksgiving and Christmas and I you know didn't know when I was going to be able to see my family again, if I was going to be able to see my family again. But uh, I was very thankful for the things that were out there. Um, but I just want to say thank you guys for all that you do. I know what a sacrifice it is, and uh, I really do truly mean it that you know you guys out there that aren't going to be home for Christmas, we are thinking about you, we are praying for you, and you know we hope that you have a safe return. Amen. Yes, uh, and. Thank you for your service for this country and all that you've done for that. And, and yes, definitely on this podcast, we are definitely thankful for living in such a, uh, an amazing country that God has given us, a country that, um, for the most part, uh, 
believes in God and that God is number one and and uh, I know that uh, and gives us the freedom to be able to worship um, uh, the way that we worship and yep. so Amen. we're thankful for that guys uh, thanks so much for tuning in today guys we love you guys so much make sure you go like and subscribe on uh, YouTube uh, or wherever you're at and share it let people know about this podcast let's grow the podcast and uh, you know what gotta lock the doors because we can't go any further until we talk about the Holy Ghost. That's right. Uh, right here at the Adventures of the Great Commission, we believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is something that is essential for your life. And if you are a Christian and you don't know what the Holy Ghost is, or you only know the Holy Ghost as the third of the, of the Godhead, of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, same thing, um, get to know it more. Go. There's so many different scriptures. Do your research. Find out how essential it is for your life. Uh, you could go to anywhere from uh, Acts 19. We'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, uh, all throughout the Gospels, Jesus talks about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the comforter, the teacher. Brings you back into remembrance. Um, Look, out, look up what the Holy Ghost did in, in Acts 2 and uh, the day of Pentecost. If you want to know about the Holy Ghost, it's real and it's alive in your life. It's not something that's just talked about in the Bible. It is something that you need for your life. So we love you guys so much. Thank you so much for tuning in today. God bless you. See you next week. Join us next time on the Adventures in the Great Commission where we talk about prayer. Now is the time to jump in! Now is the time to jump in with everything that is within!